So, spatial video. It's this hot new thing, right? Maybe there have been some other people making mind-blowing clips, or maybe yourself want to create some immersive memories in 3D. Have you been wondering if you just need to rush out and buy the latest iPhone to do it, or there are any options? Well, in this video today, I'm dive into right that for you, because I've been playing with a couple of those devices in the different scenario in the past weeks, and I'm going to break it all down for you. So let's get started. Recently, I took a road trip and decided to go all in in spatial video, trying to capture everything in 3D format. I brought two different devices with me. Here they are, this iPhone, this is the other phone, which I'll also talk about. And I experiment them a lot, noting both pros and cons in this new media of spatial video production. But this video isn't just a simple product review. I am myself really interested in the potential of storytelling using this new media, spatial video, and I really wanted to see how we can use this new medium to create experiences that truly resonate with people, truly connect them. So I'm going to share my experiences with you in this video, help you decide which device is right for you and what results you can expect, how you can get started with your own spatial journey with um, maybe a, just a hands-on device with yourself. So let's start it by talking about cameras we are looking at today. This is the iPhone 16 Pro. This is the Xreal Beam Pro. As you can see, well now both of these devices use a dual lens setup for getting the 3D effect capturing the spatial video, just like our human eyes. But there is where the things start to differ for them. They use different types of lenses. So if we look at the iPhone 16 Pro, it's using the two lenses on the top, the main camera on one side, an ultra wide camera on the other side to capture two stream of videos for spatial video. On the Beam Pro, well, it's very obvious. You can see there are two lenses and they use that for the 3D stereo effect. But the distance between the lenses is quite different. If you look at the iPhone 16 Pro, the lenses are quite close to each other and the data shows they are about 19 millimeters separated away. And on the Beam Pro, it's much bigger. Well, it's obvious, right? Comparing this to this, the Beam Pro, the two lenses is about 15 meters away, which you can see is quite similar to how I human eyes are separated. But as a reference, the Vision Pro, also capture spatial video. I don't have a Vision Pro, so just use this as a reference. They use the two main lenses in the front, well, to, you can't see my eye, to capture the spatial video I've put on, and you can see they're quite close to where my human eye is, so it's also the way it's doing its spatial video job. Now, this is what we can see on our side, the difference of their lens, their hardware setup. All those differences leads to difference in the results and output files. We know that the iPhone uses special MVHEVC format, while the Beam Pro goes with the FSBS or full side-by-side -side format. I will talk about the format in detail about later, but you know that this is related to their hardware setup. Well, now I want to jump a little bit forward and talk about the difference I discovered when using them in the past trip. So how do I find them in real life? In the four-day trip, to South Island in New Zealand, the first thing I learned is their hands-on experience can be quite different. The iPhone 16 Pro is an all-in-one device. We're using that every day, so we know that, which is super convenient. I can capture photos and normal videos, just as you would likely do, and now it's like I'm capturing video now. But I can also capture spatial video and spatial photos at the same device on the same time. I don't have to switch to other things. But the Beam Pro is a dedicated device for spatial video capture. It only do that. Spatial video and spatial photos and nothing else. It's a very purposely built and it means I have to take it on my hand every time, pull out the pocket, put away the other phone and then shoot spatial video horizontally like this. Now when I done spatial video, I need to put it back to my pocket, I'll pull out another phone, maybe it's an iPhone, maybe the, uh, the Android to capture photos and the videos that I can share on social media. And there's actually more than that. So what I just talked about is the experience of using them. And when I get back from my chip, I also noticed the results and then the video, the output from devices. First, 
is the size and the format. So the iPhone 16 Pro captures spatial video default in 1080p 3fps, which is locked in by Apple factory setup. Now using third-party apps, you can unlock that and goes up to 4K 30fps, but there will be no stabilization, which means you need a gimbal. The Beam Pro is a little bit different. It's also locked in on 1080p, but it can capture 60fps, which is a double the frame rate. And previous, from my feedback of my previous spatial vlogs, people like higher frame rate because it gives them the smoother viewing experience. So the Beam Pro wins on the frame rate side, but didn't get too much better on the resolution because it's also captured 1080p. Now, different file also leads to different workflow. It decides how you're gonna work with them with the video you captured, you get from those devices. We know that iPhone spatial video uses a proprietary format, MVHEVC, that work best with the Apple ecosystem. You will be likely need to use a Final Cut Pro on a Mac and a Vision Pro for playback to editing the spatial video and watch them. So if you are trying to stay within Apple's watered garden, then it's all easy that you can just go everything choosing the Apple way. Beam Pro, on the other hand, outputs a standard FSBS or full side-by-side -side in its full name video, which you can import into almost any video editing software like CapCut, uh, DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere, whatever your favorite is. It's just like a long strip of normal video and you can edit it in any way you want, any format you are happy working with. And also another thing I noticed in the trip, not only in the video format they are producing, is the video quality itself. So the iPhone generally performs well in indoor or and outdoor, what kind of the low light or normal light conditions, and it produces a quite crisp image along the way due to its camera system and the good video capability that the iPhone has. But because of how it uses ultra wide camera as the left eye and the normal camera as its right eye, you may find that, well, what I, that's what I find out, the image quality is not consistent or identical between the left and right eye. So compared to the main lens, which works on the right, the ultra wide lens generally outputs a lower quality video on details, such as if you look at the example here, the texture on the clothes the person is wearing, it looks more blurred and smudged on the left side. If you zoom in a little bit, so that's the quality difference. The other thing we can see in the same example is the bokeh outside focus. Because the main lens has a much bigger aperture, so it means while it focuses on the human, the background is blurred. But on the ultra-wide, it's not the same story. The ultra-wide, everything just clear within, with outside, the focus playing. It's just sharp, but it's just the difference. So you see the difference here, but mm, did you will definitely see more of this feeling of imbalanced visual effects left and right eye if you watch it in 3D later in my special vlog, which I'll be produced later. And those disparity of the video details will lower the viewing experience when you watch it in 3D. Plus, the closer distance of the lenses on iPhone means it has less 3D effect. You feel like it's less 3D and so you feel less immersive. So those things we will also need to find out or have a try yourself when you're watching the special video that I'm going to make. But the Beam Pro, the image quality on both eyes are consistent because the two lenses are identical. They are both 50 megapixel lenses. And also because the lenses are much further away from each other, 50 millimeters in this way, the 3D effect is much stronger compared to the video or to the footage coming out of iPhone. However, I find that the Beam Pro really struggles in low light conditions and its image quality just deteriorates so fast. As you can see in this example here, it's just a lot of noise or the sky is completely blown out because the sun is getting sunset and the light is getting low. So its image processing quality is not as good as iPhone because of a chip or software design. You will see more of those differences or I would say trade-offs when you're looking into the footage yourself when I upload my spatial vlog. Well, that's what I'm currently working on, so stay tuned for that. And also another reason for you to subscribe to my channel and turn on notification. But we haven't done it in today's video yet, so just stay on. So we have been talking about the differences and the several different aspects about those two devices, but which one should you get? 
Well, my answer is, it really depends on how you plan to use it. The iPhone is a great all around if you're already using an iPhone. Well, that's a weird way of saying it, but if you're already using iPhone Pro for your daily device, then you don't need to purchase anything else to start jumping into making special videos because the phone can already do that. Photos, regular videos, special content, all in one device. And it's also a good option if you are looking to, like say, just randomly or Sometimes capture family events, capture some small, uh, some important scenarios, not a heavy user of spatial video, and then you will still want to try and stay within Apple ecosystem, then maybe just get an iPhone because it could be one plus the reason for you to upgrade. But if you are someone that who wants to, like me, dedicate a device just for spatial video content, trying to make some more serious, professional level spatial videos, then the Beam Pro can be a better option. And also because of the format for SBS uh, video output, it's more compatible with uh, all kinds of video editing software. It's easier to process and the chance for around. So making the workflow much more adaptable to different tools that you're using. But when choosing this way, you might want to have more creative control and to make sure the lighting conditions, the environment that you're gonna work into because those will be on your hands to control. Also, a shout out to Xreal. If you are watching this, please unlock the 4K resolution in spatial videos on your Beam Pro devices. If you do so, this will become the go-to spatial content machine for many, many creators and really unlock a lot of new potentials. And thank you if you are listening to this. All right, back to our discussion. Beside of those hardware resolution workflow things we've been talking about mentioned, I think your current technical ecosystem and other devices you're working with is also a factor you have to consider into it. So say you already own an iPhone that's compatible, you might want to stick with it and then go with the Mac Final Pro path for the workflow entire processing thing. The Final Cut Pro has the ability to do that now to process their own special video, which I will uh, come up with a tutorial for that. And if you are in the plan of getting a Vision Pro, then of course you are going for the Apple path. But however, say you are an Android user or if you are on budget but still looking for a device that can view and produce those spatial content, or you want to your spatial content to be more widely available in different platforms, easy to process, the Beam Pro can be a relative affordable way to go into that. But iPhone can of course do the same thing, but it will require another extra step of processing and converting your content before dive into editor. But, but I will leave that for a different tutorial, not today. And ultimately, I would say both devices can capture decent spatial videos, each with their own advantage, their own disadvantage on different scenarios. It really comes down to how you plan to shoot spatial video, what kind of stories you want to tell, and how comfortable you are with the entire work role, with entire post-processing steps, the procedures, tools you're familiar with. But whatever you say, I'm just an absolute beginner. I have no idea about anything. Then my suggestion will be try before you buy. If you can, you can borrow an old iPhone, follow my previous tutorials and try special video production on them. See how you think of it. Or you can borrow one of the devices we mentioned today from your friends, from your family, and give the special video a try. See how you feel about the process the result and you'll be much better equipped to decide which way you are going to step into. It's all about being creative, isn't it? So it's a creative choice. All right, I think that's all for today. I hope you learned something new. If you find this video useful, then please hit the like button, share it around and subscribe for more content coming up. I will see you in next one. Thank you.